Welcome everybody. Welcome to a brand TV show called Wine and Chill. It's a new show we just started and I'm here with uh, Tzvi Lifshitz from Fairlawn, New Jersey, from Bergen County, New Jersey, some of our hometowns. And we're going to be talking about wines from actually Israel. Today's episode is sponsored by the Israel Wine Agency. And we are in partnership and collaboration with the Israel Alliance Network, both organizations that Svi is involved with, and organizations that I am a supporter and a uh, big collaborator with. And today, right in front of us, we're gonna go ahead and just go right into it. We're gonna talk about uh, Karma Winery and Karma Wines, and that's this wine we have right in front of us now. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce the main speaker of the uh, this wine and some of the wines we're going to be uh, learning about, and that's Tzvi. And we're going to try to engage with his, all the wines that he has on his in his world. And Tzvi, please tell us about yourself and about the wine, please. Well, I'm not the speaker of the winery. I don't work, <coughs> I don't work for the winery, but I do import the winery into this country. Thank God. Um, so this winery is a very interesting story. It's called Karma, not to be confused with Carmel or Karma, the Buddhist uh, concept, but Karma as in uh, the word Karim, which is Hebrew for, for uh, which actually Karma is Aramaic and Karim is Hebrew for vineyard. And uh, the really cool part about this winery, first of all, it's uh, located in a place called Tirosh, Israel, which is right next to a town called Bet Shemesh. Nice. As you guys know, which means house of the sun. And the cool part, <coughs> cool part about this winery is that um, what they let you do is, let's say you don't live in the land of Israel, you can buy plots on the <coughs> land and you can, you can purchase plots on the land uh, and they grow all sorts of things besides grapes. They grow all the, what's called the seven species of the land of Israel, dates, figs, all these other things. And whenever they keep a mitzvah, a commandment, anything to do with the land, whether it's the sabbatical, the shemitah, whether it's things like orla, other things, you get the credit for keeping the commandment, even though you don't live in the land of Israel, because there's there are there are commandments that are Israel only, that are, apply only to Israel, having to do with land and agriculture. So this winery is very active in that. It's called uh, in Hebrew, it's called Birkat Haaretz. Um, so uh, this particular wine we brought in. This is a 2014 vintage, um, and it was 24 months in French oak barrels. So I, if I'm not mistaken, it was um, it finally was bottled in 2014. And when we brought it in 2018, it was very, what's called hot. It was very, very, it wasn't ready. Still needed time in the bottle. So now it's the year 2023. And this wine actually is still good, but it's a little bit past its peak. Uh, and this one is actually called the Sarig. Sarig in Hebrew is the, if you guys ever seen the vines that grow uh, on the sides of like uh, structures, like wooden structures. So that's a Sarig. Uh, so this is a blend, a Cabernet Sauvignon uh, Merlot blend, and uh, we're going to try it. It's a red. I mean, at this point, we just got to try it. There's a lot of information, that I have, a lot of yeah. questions I have to ask. Yeah, please, sir. But I guess the best thing we could do at this point is try the wine. Yes. It's past its peak. We don't want to keep waiting. Past its peak, but it's still good. So we'll say, uh, we'll say a bracha. We'll say a blessing on that. We have to say a bracha. I have plenty of questions on the commandments that you're asking. Smell up. Wow, it smells strong. Mm -hmm. That is strong. Okay, here we go. Chaim, Chaim. Baruch Atah Adonai Mechalam, Borei Pri Agafen. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai Mechalam, Borei Pri Agafen. Baruch Atah Adonai Mechalam. I mean, it's like it like, like creeps up on you at the end there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's like it's a little sweet. It's, it's fruity. Yeah. It's Powerful, like, fr fruity but dry. That's the way to describe it. Fruity and yeah. but dry. And then it creeps up at the end like a punch <coughs> at the end there. Yeah. Very tasty wine. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Very fun. I mean, this is mm -hmm. we got one more sip. The crazy part is that the winery actually just, I don't know, uh, it's a little crazy story. They had wow. a, they had a fire. So they're not they're actually currently rebuilding. Uh, they had beautiful events, their weddings and bar mitzvahs and all these things, and they had a fire. Uh, unfortunately, but they're rebuilding and hopefully they're going to come, come back bit better and bigger. Uh, we hope to import more from them because the wines are great. Very small, like 10,000 bottles a year. Um, most of the benefactors are in, uh, they live in places like Panama. There's actually a Jewish community in Panama that funds this 
uh, this winery also in, in America, in Brooklyn. That. Yeah, so. Uh, well, first of all, yeah. Karma, yeah. if you're listening, the wine is delicious. The more I like it's, I'm going into my body and the more I'm thinking about it, it's really tasty. Um, <clears throat> so you guys import only wines from Israel, correct? Correct, at the moment. Beautiful. So, and this specific wine is next to Beit Shemesh, which is, is that 30 minutes, I'd say like north of? I think Jerusalem. It's 30 minutes west, it's in the center of the country, west of Jerusalem. So west, yeah. west of Jerusalem, beautiful. I've yeah. uh, been to Beit Shemesh, for all you Beit Shemeshers that are listening now, Beit yeah. Shemesh is awesome. I know there's like five complexes <laughs> over there, and you guys are keep building, which is really great. Um, and the wine's good. So if you guys are Beit Shemesh, as Karma rebuilds their operation, you should go buy some of this wine, or hit up Tzvi, Pour some of this wine because it's really tasty. It's really got like this, now that I'm it's like creeping, it's like a smooth, fruity blend. And uh, I mean, you can chill on this like we're doing now. <laughs> uh, so what were you saying about the commandments? Um, you're saying every time... Yeah, basically what, what there, there are commandments that only apply to the land of Israel. They actually can only be done in the land of Israel. They all have to do with the land. So people <coughs> who don't live in the land of Israel can't keep these commandments. So So... Uh, the rabbis figured out a mechanism to where you're, you're, you can purchase plots of land and designate somebody as, a, as an emissary, as your, as your shliach, as your emissary, somebody who lives in, in the land of Israel, to do physically carry it out for you, but you get the credit for it. You get the spiritual credit for, for that commandment. So I'm backing up. So yeah. real quick, so we give to the audience some general context. A mitzvah, I think, loosely is interpreted in the world, in the spiritual world, as a deed. Like a positive deed, like something positive you do to someone else, like uh, caring for others or visiting the sick or, um, you know, giving some charity, you know, donations. Those are positive deeds. Uh, in this case, um, also what I heard when I, I just spent a whole year in Israel, actually in Jerusalem, uh, reconnecting to my spiritual roots. Um, you know, there's these things called positive and negative deeds, mitzvahs. But also now mitzvah is interpreted as a commandment, like the Ten Commandments. If you keep them, you get the mitzvah credits. You get points in this world and in the next world as well, which is awesome. It's a point system. You get points. Everybody loves points. Reward system. So what kind of commandment can be done with this only in Israel that you get some points for? So basically there's one big one, there's a few, there's a big one called Shemitah, which literally means sabbatical. So what happens is every seventh year uh, you have a prohibition, you're not allowed to work the land. So these wineries, all of these wineries, is a bit, very big test. Uh, for example, in order to, one of the things in order for them to be like labeled or certified as kosher, they have to be, keep this Shemitah commandment. So on the seventh year, and it was the last Shemitah year, according to the calendar the rabbi set up, I guess, you know, whenever it was, thousands of years ago, was 2022. So in 2022, none of the winemakers that I know personally in Israel worked their land. So, so basically it's like a big test, right? Because there's like one year where you literally are not putting out uh, that, that particular vintage of wine. If you're a kosher winery in, in America, you could do whatever you want. If you're a kosher winery in, in Italy, in France, you could do whatever you want. But in Israel, you must, if you're a kosher winery, you must not work your land in that particular year. So they're coming out with 2021, and then, and then at 2022, some, sometimes what they do is that there's mechanisms where they sell it to somebody and they work the land and then they produce wine, but they're not even allowed to profit. That's a whole other thing. Um, so, so I'll so add that's pretty uh, much, yeah. I'm adding not to cut you off, just no, um, because we're short on time. So the idea of Shemitah is actually a very spiritual component, as Tzvi yeah. was saying. Um, it comes from the idea that uh, you know, the world was built in, in six days right. or seventh day. And right. after six days, the seventh day, uh, the Almighty rested. And, you know, with uh, Israel being this holy land, this spiritual land, as we're talking about positive deeds and commandments, it sounds like this this uh, wine is being built with these laws, incorporated mm -hmm. in Shemitah laws, which are very strict mm -hmm. uh, legal laws for the spirituality of the, the nature to... Uh, to work so to that mm -hmm. please if you can get some uh karma wine and reach out to the israel wine agency and reach out to tvi mm -hmm. uh this wine's awesome so the chaim to all of you the chaim to you the chaim to the world we love you world cheers the chaim, the chaim.